Hello and welcome to this very special launch of my Dark Rifts, a adventure set in the Star Trek Adventures second edition role-playing system by Modiphius. Now, I had the absolute pleasure of having an amazing group of players come and sit around my table just behind me, and we got to spend a couple of days playing some serious Star Trek. Uh, yeah, Serious-ish Star Trek. This is more like Lower Decks than, say, The Next Generation, although that's probably how we started it, but isn't that how it always goes? Now, I had planned out a very straightforward adventure, which I'm not going to give you all the details in this pre-game little spiel that I'm giving you. What I will tell you is that I made a mistake right up at the beginning of the adventure. I had planned for the characters to not interact with the opening event. But something in the back of my head when they started to look into it said they've got to have the opportunity. And boy, did they pull out all of the stops and they actually succeeded in doing what I didn't need them to do. So it made it very difficult to then kind of launch the whole thing. That was not enough to derail everything, not by a long shot, but it certainly changed my plans. And I'll talk more in episode two. If you want me to talk more about my plans, leave a comment down below, by the way. If you would rather just watch the game, then let's just do that. However, my plans needed to change slightly. Not completely, because my approach to designing this adventure for Star Trek Adventures 2nd Edition is very straightforward. There is an objective by the bad guys. They need to do something, they need to achieve something, and to that end, they need to work out a plan on how they're going to do it. So my bad guys worked out what they were trying to do. No spoilers, don't you worry. They worked out what they were trying to do, and then they worked out how they were going to do it. Now, I needed a couple of little steps, a little trail of breadcrumbs for my party to be able to follow. Now, this does sound very much like railroading. And when it comes to these kind of investigation type of games, which Star Trek, I think, sits firmly in the middle of, well, you've got to leave a trail of breadcrumbs and you've got to leave lots of breadcrumbs. It's not railroading insofar as I do not want my players to succeed or my players to fail or to have this big finale which I'm planning for them to get to. I am reacting as the bad guys as the players discover stuff. And you'll see that I needed to throw in some interesting reactions, some little tweaks to my plan because the rails, the direction that the players were going on weren't exactly the directions that I thought they would. The other challenge that you have is whenever you are presenting a mystery with lots of different moving parts and things, the player characters can sometimes get consumed with one line of reasoning or, as was the case with my players, there are too many lines of reasoning and no one's really sitting down and going, well, this is it. Something that I can give you as a piece of advice, if you are a player in a game of Star Trek, if your responsibility is not to solve the mystery, if you are just the pilot, you should still be doing this. Work out a timeline of the events. Go back to the beginning. Look at what you know for certain. Look at whether it's a known fact or whether it's an assumption, because assumptions can lead you into all sorts of dark places. And uh, my crew certainly went there. Anyway, enough teasing from me. Suffice it to say, my bad guys' plans were in action, and they were almost scuppered right at the beginning of the adventure. So, let's watch. Hello and welcome to this very special playthrough of Star Trek Adventures Second Edition from Modiphius. My name is Guy and I will be the Game Master for this uh, wonderful ship's crew that we have assembled for you today. Uh, quick shout out to Easy Roller Dice for giving us some dice to play with and to Galaxy Builder Dex giving us planets, lots and lots of planets, which we will see throughout the show as well. And that's enough for me. Uh, let's hand it over to, let's start here. Okay, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. everybody. I am your androgynous android, late night DJ host, uh, Nathan Blades. 
uh, tabletop RPG designer and voice actor. Uh, you can find me on uh, Campaign Skyjack's podcast. It's Captain Aura Marvale. And uh, you can uh, play the games that I've made if you want to at uh, theneoncaster.itch.io. Thank you for having me. I'm hi. I'm Jack. I don't have a cool intro like that, but I'm Jack or Draconic. You can find you can find me on all socials at Draconic. That's D R A K O N I Q U E S. I do everything TW related, um, TW forming, actually producing and writing. Uh, some of my most recent works are I wrote for the uh, Doctor Who Teacher RPG. I also am the producer of Beyond the Brook, which is the Open the Garden Warning about actual play, which is. Uh, kind of being nominated for a couple of awards, Ooh. and uh, I play a bunch of two chappy Ds and play tragic characters, which I'll probably be playing <laughs> today. <laughs> tragic. <laughs> yeah. tragic. Love that. Hi, I'm Josephine McAdam. I'm an actor in all sorts of things. If horror movies are your bag, check out some horror anthologies on Shutter. If you're into TT more TTRPGs, check out all sorts. LA by Night, Haunted City, Battle for Beyond. The dungeon run and so forth. You can find everything on my socials, and that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, my name is Quinns. I am. Uh, you might know me from my YouTube work on uh, People Make Games, uh, doing documentaries about games and play, or more recently on Quinns Quest, doing reviews of RPGs because I thought these things are fun and I want to talk about them for my life. It's very good. Oh, thank yeah. you very much. Good uh, choice. I might be biased, but I think it's a good choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sweet. Uh, good. You're very happy to be here and being in, what can I say, a very professional actual play? Yeah. Exciting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <I'll go with> <laughs> <that>. <laughs> Lovely. My name is Guy and I run the YouTube channel How to Be a Great GM and you can buy books on basically How to Be a Great GM, um, <laughs> which hopefully you will see demonstrated today and that relies on my players being amazing and wonderful players because that's what really makes the show. <laughs> all right. Oh, wow. No oh, pressure yeah. at all. That's the secret. Wow. Yeah, be a great fine. GM. Have good play. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let us now meet the crew of the USS Javelin. The Javelin is a Nova class starship. They are designed primarily. <laughs> <laughs> A Nova class a starship. Pre pre now you've thrown me off. Oh, now you've so thrown me off. Look what you've done. Look what you've done. A Nova class starship. Pre oh, I've got a. What word? I, uh, there. Ha ha. Hmm. Who are you playing? Oh, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. On the, this Nova class starship, I will be playing Votin Stolix, a uh, Betazoid uh, who is working in the uh, science officer role. Uh, as a Betazoid, I have uh, telepathic abilities, uh, but I like to keep that under wraps. Uh, sometimes you <laughs> need to keep things secretive to get the job done. Importantly, we all outrank you. Mm. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Well, sorry, there's no one else he thinking about that. Swinging. <laughs> I mean, I outrank all of you, so. I yeah, thought we were keeping uh, things under wraps. I, I, it's fine. It's fine. I kind of out, outrank too. you too, Quinn. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm yeah. gonna to be playing okay, Lieutenant yeah. Commander Taeyon. Um, they're a Vulcan, and they're going to be the chief of security on this ship. Um, they are uh, they're a Vulcan, but aren't accepted by many Vulcans because of their belief that suppressing feelings and emotion is honestly a sign of weakness, that you need to do that in the first place. So they don't mm. do that. Mm. Um, but yeah, and I'm also one of the, the newer members of this crew. So I'm going to be, along with all of you watching, being introduced to these characters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your Captain Samara Renault. <clears throat> I am uh, captain of this here USS Javelin. Nova class, beautiful starship that we will be grateful to be on. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am so excited to rely on my very capable crew that will make no mistakes while in my presence. Isn't that right? <laughs> That's right, yep. Um, I will be playing <laughs> Dale Dutton, another Betazoid. Um, mm -hmm. So we are able to communicate telepathically. Oh, sorry, human. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I am a Betazoid who is able to read emotions and um, being slightly on the spectrum, I find that just very distressing. It, <laughs> it's really not, it, it, if I could have chosen my race, it's, it wouldn't have been this. Um, but I've always found the hum of engines soothing and that's shaped my entire career. I certainly prefer um, and the company of engines to people, but that has made me a first-rate chief engineer on this ship that I am fine with being posted on, even though it's small <laughs> and slow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
wonder about that title first read. Um, <laughs> oh. You want to call my ship a boo? <laughs> Let's see, a dude is going to uh, prove his. Uh... Oh, should we do pronouns real quick? Ooh, oh, sure, yes. that makes sense. Yes, yes. Uh, Victor Stolux is they them. Yeah, Taon is he they. Samara, Captain, is she her? Uh, and Dale is he him. They are. <laughs> Right, so the Nova-class starship is reconnaissance and scientific survey uh, ship designed for a relatively small crew of only about 78 in total, and is not designed for long-range exploration, but rather for exploration closer to home. And so that is where the USS Javelin finds herself. And uh, I will hand over to the captain to introduce us to what it is that's going on. Uh, it's Captain's Log, star date 47, 47 years, 65. We are currently on a stellar survey in the trinary star system 125 beta, um, just outside star base 129. We are gonna be trying to get whatever, uh, whatever macroscopic readings of this trinary star system that we can get. I'm gonna be relying on a lot of my science officers and uh, on on the crew. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, this going completely unfazed according to plan. There will be absolutely no uh, difficulties that I foresee and everything's been running smoothly thus far. And so it is that the bridge is quietly humming with beeps as the crew go about doing their daily duties. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I love Lovely. Lovely. I'm so Lovely. sorry. No, that's <laughs> perfect. Sound effects. Sound effects are perfect. Uh, yes. In that case, Lieutenant Odutan, oh, what sugar. are you doing? Um, I wanted to know, as Chief Engineer, I'm, I usually that role is seen in the engine room, right? Correct. So in... So, of course, when I imagine Star Trek on TV, the engine rooms are like these big palatial spaces. Not so much on a Nova class ship. Yes. <laughs> yes. How many engineers do we think are, it's like subordinate engineers, do we think are around me? In terms of on your, you, oh, underneath you? Well, well you yeah. have 10. 10? Mm. Okay, great. Mm. Um, I think it is a very peaceful engine room. Um, it is, it's deeply, profoundly workmanlike. Um, Odutan, um, because he finds the emotions of everybody upsetting. I sort of encourage all of my staff to practice mindfulness, which enables, <laughs> like, just, it's a, it's, a, it's almost zen. Almost zen. I like that. Oh okay. Those dice are massive. <laughs> yes. It's for you, so you can see the numbers, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So, as you are oh, in your yeah. zen-like space, oh, chief engineer, one of the ensigns comes up to you. Pardon the intrusion, sir. Mm. But there is a fluctuation in the magnetic constrictors that... Uh, it, 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 it's just started, sir. Uh, can I, how, with being a telepathic betazoid, yes. this, is, this is all very inefficient. Like, am I able to just sort of like complete the sentence that this stuttering ensign is trying to get out? Yes, he's terrified <laughs> of interrupting you, doesn't want to get shouted at, berated, or in any way diminished in front of his com comrades, and he has no reason to explain why this fluctuation in the magnetic constrictors has stopped. Okay, I think before he's even, he? Before he's even finished the sentence, I'm I'm going to have walked off. And, and this is, I, I'm very much like a Kirk kind of figure, just like doing everything by myself. That's generally the most efficient thing. I have the metric to prove it. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> and I will drift straight towards the thing you said. That what was it? The magnetic constrictors. Of course, I'm going to yes. drift straight towards the nearest control panel for the constrictors and uh, and take a look. Uh, I do have uh, a talent related to this. Oh. Um, within uh, the Star Trek rule set, I have a talent, because I, I preempted this when I built this character. <laughs> I know my ship when trying to determine the source of a technical problem first. Die I buy is free. Mm. Very nice. Ooh. Okay. Right. Leave it to me, Captain. I will. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I would like you, if you could, to please give me a reason and engineering check. Oh, 
This is great. This yes. is my time to shine, baby. The Can I difficulty get... is... Yeah, the whole bunch. Uh, well. Mm. And I, I, I have to tell you the difficulty. Uh, the difficulty is four. What? Oh. <laughs> oh. Are, the, are these momentum that we have currently to start the, the game with? This is currently the momentum that you have to play with. Okay, so I've got two dice by default. I get the first die I buy for free. Free. Um, mm -hmm. I'll buy at least one. Um, All right. This that would... gives you a potential of four or eight successes. Uh, if I crit, if you yeah. Crit. Yes. Um, now, the magnetic constrictors, would yes. you say they fall under the focus of power? What would you say they do generally? Magnetic constrictors are responsible for controlling the amount of matter, antimatter, that is fed into the dilithium chamber, causing the reaction, powering the entire warp core. Right, that sounds like it falls under the field of warp field dynamics. No? Probably not. No, Great. not so much. Um, I'm not liking the trying to get a focus in there. Yeah, focus I was trying to squeeze the focus in there. What is your other focus? The, uh, power systems, structural Power systems. Oh, power systems. Absolutely. Great. Okay, absolutely. So it's a regulatory power system. You know, I, I would just be so distressed if the first thing your lovely <laughs> audience saw was me completely banjaxing a roll. But so you're gonna, first rate. So I, it's, yeah, I did say first rate, problem. so let's burn all the team's momentum to get a fifth place in there. What? <laughs> don't worry, don't okay, worry. But because it's a focus, that means the success will count as two? As two, No, well, it automatically is a success. Oh, you automatically have one success mm -hmm. from the Oh, really? Focus? Oh, I thought focus. focus widens the crit range. Yeah, to your department. Okay, it widens the crit range to your departments because two out of oh, that's five thought. people think it does, so that's what it's doing. <laughs> <laughs> this is how role playing really works, yes. everybody. Yes, well, I realized I left my cheat sheets elsewhere on the basics. Okay, but yet, right. reason right, so. plus engineering. That's a whopping Correct. 16. Let's go. Oh, that's Ooh. at least a, that. Oh, what? No, that's, no, that's, no, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, it widens the crit range to my department. Yeah, we say mm -hmm. that's fine. So then that's two successes per, yeah, per like that. So that's three, which is under my engineering. Five. Right. So that's one two, success. Two, three, four. Scrape by. Ooh. Nice. Four. Okay. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. close. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I think like a, a Dutton just get. I think like where traditionally in Star Trek you might see engineers like frantically running between panels. A Dutton just goes incredibly still and static, just thumbing this console. All of the engineers under me know not to say a word when I have this expression on my face. Right, mm. absolutely. Meanwhile, whilst you are exploring what is causing this bizarre interference in the uh, magnetic constrictors, what is our <laughs> chief of science doing? Mm. Uh, since our, our ship is uh, specifically a science and research uh, vessel, uh, it's actually quite large. Uh, in contrast to the small engine one. Some of us are pretty um, <laughs> uh, I'll, uh, I'll say that as of like an aesthetic choice, um, <laughs> the walls and ceiling of the kind of science research room are essentially like reprogrammable panels to show like patterns and designs. And it's been set in like a skybox looking like a greenhouse. It feels very verdant, wow. uh, despite how in the kind of coldness of space there are not that many plants unless you specifically grow them. Uh, Votin Stolix, also a Betazoid, uh, with a deep skin and uh, an asymmetrical kind of braids that kind of cover one eye a lot of the time, um, is uh, going through a long checklist of all the particular uh, tools and scanners and protocols that they will need when they arrive at the Trinary Star System to start collecting data. Fantastic. Uh, the ship has just dropped out of warp and the trinary star system is now available for scanning. Mm -hmm. Would you like to initiate the scan of the star system? Absolutely. Um, interestingly, mm -hmm. I probably, even though I am the, uh, the main science officer, I am a lower rank than most people on, the, uh, on this particular starship. So how many people am I, am I working with that are not working <laughs> under me that I'm working with? So there are 20 science officers mm. aboard. I hate It's a science about this. vessel. <laughs> yeah. Right? It's a, However, yeah. because mm. you are chief petty officer, mm. you are in charge of the science department. Mm. Whether they feel. If you want to be. Oh, I think I am in charge. It's whether. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm in charge. I'm a, <laughs> but uh, uh, whether, whether my staff feel like they want to be taking orders from someone they technically outrank is their problem. Um, oh, they have to. Mm hmm. All right, everybody, let's go through the checklist one last time and then let's start scanning, shall we? <laughs> Marvelous. 
big kind of gesture towards this really large screen that's like the main uh, information display. Nobody wants to be looking at a tiny screen, bad for their back. Um, <laughs> that will be displaying all of the major information of this. And with a big gesture wide, the screen boots up and starts scrolling all this info. Uh, Lovely. Give me a reason and science check, please. Absolutely. Uh, my reason is 12 yes. and my science is 5, giving me a target of uh, 17. 17. Wow. Yeah, that is, you have maxed Goodness. out. So we start with our set of 2. Yes. Uh, Scanning a trinary star system is not difficult at all. The no. difficulty is literally 1. And we hmm. must use the ship's the sensors ship will, at Correct. All here? The ship will assist. So uh, who would like to roll for the ship? Traditionally, that's usually the engineer or the captain oh. who rolls for the ship. We could roll but a dice each. each. How many dice? Do you only one. They the only ship get one. one. Yeah. No, you should. You have to learn to love the ship. <laughs> You've been established. <laughs> <laughs> you got to spend time with her. You have to learn her. to love the <laughs> ship. <laughs> mm. Wow. Choice, do I, Captain? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, All so right, for cool. the ship, the the ship is. Um, I have a copy. Science and Indra. thank you. I, I have copies here as well. Yeah, okay. Sensors, um, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sensors and science, correct? So Four. 13. Seven, Thirteen. Thirteen. Great. Okay, uh, let's go and roll my two D. I don't. I don't think I need to. I don't think I want to push this since oh, we're just trying to get the one. Advanced sensor suites on this Nova class. You're going to roll 2d20 for an assist. That's right. Mm. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my two are uh, <laughs> two an 11 and a 14, which are both under 17. That's, so that's right. Two hits. Two. I got a 10 and a 14. Is 14, did we just miss? Just, just missed. 13. Okay, great. So you're so one success. One success. Okay. So that gives you one bonus momentum. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, on a successful check using uh, the ship scanner, I can ask additional questions. You can indeed. Oh. Um, okay, so we've started our scan yes. of this trinary star system. It looks beautiful on our screen. It does. I will give you basic information to begin with. I would love to know if you find it moving to be looking at these three rotating stars. Like, there's, if there's only there are because there are only twenty four trinary star systems in the entire. Yeah. Galaxy. So how, the fact that this feel? is one of the lists. Yes. Um, I just want to interrupt. <laughs> Um, we also have high resolution sensors. Yes. Ooh. So, wouldn't there be a bonus momentum? Bonus uh, bonus? Yes, when using sensors and not in combat. You're quite so right. Gain a second look at that. Bonus. So, you've got two Fabulous. bonus. Okay. Two bonus momentum. Yeah, I think it's, it's genuinely beautiful to look at, especially in Ultra HD on our gigantic <laughs> screen. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, marvelous. Okay. So, basic information that you got before you ask your question, is what makes this trinary star system unusual mm -hmm. is that all three stars are exactly the same size mm. and the same weight, which is unusual. This is not a common occurrence within trinary stars, which are not common to begin with. Mm. Which probably explains why they are all rotating so harmoniously. Indeed. They're perfectly in sync with each other. Think about your question and I will come back to you because now we need to find out what it is exactly that our new chief of security is doing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, Tay on the chief of security is, I think, still trying to connect <laughs> with um, the people that they are newly in charge of, the new secu the security team they're newly in charge of. Um, and the thing about Tay on is that they take the kind of work and recreation that is very seriously. <laughs> they they believe that you need to if you're going to work hard, you need to play just as hard because um, mm. um, it's very important. Uh, a a happy team is a a efficient team mm -hmm. is what they believe. So I think they're going around the security team and essentially making sure almost like a debriefing, but not of like anything official. Of like how did you spend your time off? How did you spend your break like, yesterday? Did you? Draw? Did you do any of your pastimes? Is this um, your first official encounter with your security team? Um, as I chief? imagine. Oh, that'd be very funny if it was. Is um, it like when bosses do like, oh yeah, we're doing a one-to-one -one kind of catch-up thing? Yeah, even though you've group. worked with them for a while. I want to make it a group thing because I think that's very awkward. I'm gonna make it a group <laughs> thing. <laughs> I think it's a group thing. Um, and Taeyon, Taeyon is about like maybe six foot, six foot one. Vulcan, uh, they're black, so very uh, dark skin with the pointed, the very typical, typical pointed Vulcan ears and upswept eyebrows. <laughs> they have um, yeah. kind of shaved side of um, side of their head, mm -hmm. but in the top, in the high top, it's kind of 
kind of a mess right now. Mm. It seems to me that's probably like constant. They don't seem to maintain that part. Mm. That just seems to be part of their look. Um, but other than that, they are very well put together. Their the uniform is pressed. They wear very sensible uh, like um, boots. Everything they everything else is very uniform, other than their metal hair. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting. Okay, so you are you are interrogating. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, oh. Wow. Okay. So your oh. your security department are really <laughs> responding well to this style oh. of management. <laughs> mm. They are they are loving it. Absolutely loving it. Science department unfortunately don't really like the approach, uh, but that's fine. And engineering definitely not. Uh, but <laughs> security security team, you there are suggestions for improving efficiency. There are holodeck programs that not only improve phaser aim and accuracy, but are also incredibly fun to play. Uh, they are just giving you everything and they are ready to go. Uh, I love that. Taeon is absolutely, I think there's like, Taeon had been very, like, I think nervous. I think almost visibly nervous as they're still new here, but the moment they see how quickly everyone latches on, to this, they definitely relax. Is this your first posting as chief of security? I think so. I think mm. this is my first posting as I think as like I had like a set like fairly high ranking on my previous shit, but I wasn't the chief of security. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think um, after my special commendations, which we'll go into later, I got given. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get into that later. But uh, <laughs> I was given. I'm sure that'll come. Sh- that'll come up. Uh, but um, I got given the uh, chief of security uh, position in this in this vessel. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so esteemed position. Yeah. On this vessel. That's all he talks about. <laughs> Captain. Mm-hmm. What you doing? Um, well, we've only just arrived. I, I still have to wait for some reports back on what those first sensor readings may be. I'm gonna give them some time to get that. So I think maybe maybe I'm spending time on a pastime right now. Hmm. As we were just traveling and uh I think I'm arranging some flowers right now in my office. Beautifully, might I say, I do this all the time. Um, the nobilin orchids, perhaps? Yes, exactly. The no, nobilin orchids. The nobilin orchids, very delicate, but I know how to treat them just right. You also have to duck occasionally. So I would like you to please give me a daring and security that check. That is called entrapment. You got, you got to set up. <laughs> Are they I like did get snapping? Is that what's happening? Um, well, I'll tell you now. Okay, daring and security. So yes, I need to roll under a 14. What's the difficulty here? Uh, it's difficulty of zero. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, great. Yeah. Do you roll there? Oh, Ooh, a 20 is a complication. To get a complication yes. on the first. Oh. still managed to get a complication. And, yeah, no success. Okay, so Denobulan orchids, <laughs> very much like the Denobulan people, occasionally if you touch them just wrong, they go <laughs> and they puff up like a puffer fish. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> and so your, your arrangement is nearly perfect. When you hear a priority communique coming through on your terminal, ba da ba, and <laughs> and <laughs> oh, no, 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 not again! <laughs> <laughs> Does this affect your like face or like like you get, you get a cut or is there a stain or something? Pollen oh, all over goodness. your uniform, perhaps. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I should probably describe what I look like. I realize yeah. you all did a wonderful job. Uh, um, <laughs> Samara looks like uh, she's let's make her like. Five eight, she's uh, got a pretty like stern look on her. She's got dark hair, short. Um, think Trinity from the Matrix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's very cool. She's a little edgy. She always has a little smoky eye going on. Um, but you know her uniform is generally pressed at all times, but it's not uncommon to see like a button undone or mm. or things just a, a little uncuffed uh, when. No one is watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when no one official is watching. Um, but yes, I think at this point, I don't know, how dangerous are these orchids? Well, they'll expand to probably about a meter and a half in size. So <laughs> oh, okay. you've oh. definitely been hit by an airbag. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, damn. And they spray out pollen. Every time. Oh, no, my allergies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what, what is it? What is it? <laughs> it's just a written communication. Oh. It is a warning. <laughs> It's a what? It's a warning, warning to be on the lookout 
uh-huh. for uh-huh. stolen Klingon ships. D sevens. Now, D seven Klingon ships are one hundred and fifty years old. Mm-hmm. They were replaced by another type of ship called a Katinga class ship. Bigger class of ship than the Nova. That's not difficult. Almost every other class <laughs> Keep of bringing ship. Keep it is up. <laughs> but uh, the uh, D sevens were the mainstay of the Klingon defense force one hundred and fifty years ago. They are relatively obsolete by today's standards. Why anyone would steal one, or according to this report, six, six mm, of them have been stolen uh, from the Klingon territories and have been reported in this sector. Yes. If you do happen to see them, you are to report back to Starfleet where they are. All right. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take this. Uh, who would I tell about this? This is. This is um... Would this be something our scanners pick up? Is this, is this something I would ask? Well, I would report to six. You are not a warship. And yeah. s- even six D7s. The That's D7 a lot, is yeah. a very big warship. Um, so it would be, if they come across on your senses, you'd find them. But you're not actively going to go no. and look for them or anything like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Could we outrun them? The D7s? If need be. Probably. Mm. Yeah. They're not particularly fast. They can cloak, but they're not particularly fast. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, our navigations and sensors. Okay. Um, I would like to let security know, at least, at the very least. Um, let's see. Uh, Commander Taon, could you come up to my office real quick? Uh, scratch that, Commander Taon. I'll meet you at the bridge. Uh, <laughs> there's a situation in here. All right. Meanwhile, in engineering, the magnetic constrictors are. They have a very small variance, which isn't anything to worry about. The ship is not going to suddenly explode. absolutely worries about it. (laughs) (laughs) But there shouldn't be a variance. With your impressive role, the variance appears to be being caused by an unusual magnetic radiation, which is emanating from kind of the the center of the star system, but not the exact center. You wouldn't be able to identify it from engineering. Okay. But as the ship is traveling closer to the trinary stars, the magnetic constrictor variance is getting bigger. It's still well within Starfleet parameters. Uh, You're looking at, you're at 94%. Starfleet says that only at a 90% would you even start to think about looking at it. Hmm. Okay. Um, I, everyone did a nice description of their characters and how cool you all look. So I do need to describe my character, but I am, Dale Dutton is not cool looking. If anything, like, you know, just the most generic white guy probably looks like almost an extra. The Like the most default Starfleet looking hair. Not particularly fit, not particularly handsome, just with a with a very deep focus um mm. almost it almost looks like he's distracted um my, with my tele, tele, telepathy to be able to communicate with beta zoids can i do that is there is there a distance on that officially <clears throat> no unofficially yes so house rule Great. you've got to be within sight perfect okay i'm slap my i'm just careful not to hit the mic yeah, yeah, that's me too, that's really i want to do that <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, are we even in a star trek we should probably just swap, we swap them to the other side that's what this means next you time see this. yeah <laughs> okay um slap communicator yes. um uh i just say the name right that's the star trek yes. uh format um i'll say chief stolux Ah, speaking. I want to add a detail. You you describing the fact that the science facilities on the Javelin were so big and spacious and had mm. this beautiful paneling. I think <laughs> the engineering uh, is like almost like a submarine, <laughs> like very <laughs> compressed, low ceilings, just entirely sort of like form functional. Mm. Um, and then you're in just this like beautiful spacious area. Um, uh, yeah. So I do speaking. Um, I say we're picking up some. Uh, acceptable, but I hate that word, mm. uh, magnetic radiation from the stars. It's doing terrible things to my, our constrictors. Well, usually when you use the word acceptable, you mean horrendous. So I will put that as a priority. Um, actually, as it so happens, I'm uh, in the middle of a bit of a scan operation right now. We'll see if there's any information that overlaps, darling. Keep me posted. Of course. 
You can hear the tilde. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Did great. Did you say darling? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Oh, oh. We're, find, we're finding out. We're finding out who, who we are together. Um, okay, great. All right. With regards to your question, do you have any questions about oh, this? Oh, yes, I do. Because you can spend your bonus momentum to get more, Yes, right? uh, so I get the, the one question under the nature of the scant, which I'm going yes. to ask. What is the lifespan of these stars? Uh, these stars have approximately 4.5 billion years left. Mm, no, no danger of going supernova anytime. None time whatsoever. There. Nice, big, stable blue stars. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't seem like it would be relevant. Uh, you don't know. Cut to you travel forward in time 4.2 billion years. I'm sorry, you just kept... yeah, make, making a note that it's not going to explode. Yes. Always good to know. Always uh, good to know. Uh, and uh, and interestingly, why I wrote the question, it seems to have already become relevant. Are there any anomalous entities in the area? There are, as a matter of fact. Mm. Unfortunately, you are too long a range to be able to get an accurate reading because the proximity of the star's massive gravitational pull is distorted sensors, mm. there appears to be a metallic ship or object that is moving under its own propulsion mm. in a non-organic man- manner, um, seems to be sailing towards the three stars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's weird. Just the one. Uh, and it's, it's way closer than we are. Yes, it is extremely close to the stars. As a matter mm. of fact, If it is a starship, unless it has specifically advanced shielding or metaphasic shielding, uh, the star's radiation would start to kill anybody who's on board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In a matter of of minutes, most likely. Okay. All right. And I was going to spend my two, like, uh, quick momentum things Mm. on uh, actually adding a trait for this system uh, you can use. Yes. You can add traits to the scenario and stuff to use them later. Uh, and with that information, I am going to add the trait to the trinary stars of beautiful but deadly. Uh, they're wonderful to look at. They are also very dangerous. Dead. I like that. Uh, okay. Right. Beautiful but deadly. Not deadly. And uh, one last uh, trait to add. Uh, as I have the talent rapid hypothesis, uh, when I've asked two or more questions on something. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't mean to uh, uh, necessarily like investigation min-max this character, but I love it for me. I I can create a trait that replicates my my understanding of the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, I... uh, Oh, how punny are we going? (laughs) Uh, yeah, I wanted to like get, make this trait something like the gravity of the situation. Um, <laughs> yes, sure. okay. So uh, I've added to my character like tag traits uh, the gravity of the situation, which is basically my understanding of the nature of how the magnetic pull of these stars work. So if it comes up again, I get some uh, bonuses to rolls about it. <laughs> Is it possible? I don't. I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn here, but is it possible that the magnetic radiation could be coming from not the stars themselves, but the figure we saw traveling very close and into the stars, the vessel? It's anomalous. Mm. Could be. You will need to get closer in order to be able to mm. determine that specifically, though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, there's a communicate back. Uh, it isn't. Um, it's your lucky day. There may be something involved. Uh, there seems to be a much larger starship than ours that is actually dangerously close. To the stars, if they happen to be lingering there for much longer, they're going to microwave everybody on side, inside, inside, uh, which would not be ideal for them. Uh, Dude, but... You're not thinking about your career now, are you? We should tell the captain. Of, of, of course, of course, I'm going to tell the captain. It's fine. It's just, you know, uh, either the stars are causing the effect, or it's the ship. Uh, and, and either, either way, way, getting closer is dangerous. The way that would be a decision for the captain, I think. Yes. Okay. Well, I will drop her a line now. Thanks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we did not agree we were going to like have this like <laughs> hatred, and before we started rolling, it's just found itself. A yeah, I don't. You, it's, it's it's wonder how much of it is malice or just how voting communicates with people. Um, but without doing a whole in character call about it there is a, a a beep through probably while you're on the way to the bridge to mm. to speak to, to Tam. Yes. is my office connected to the bridge were you that was the assumption were I you think. decorating in your office or in your private quarters 
<laughs> in my office. Oh yes, and then your office is directly connected to the bridge. So sure, sure. <laughs> While you're waiting for Tail yeah. to arrive, you yeah. get like a status update. Um, well, sure. Yeah, no, I was going to say we're going to skip it over us, but we'll do it. You get the information. Yes. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. We, we can save in-person chat for later. Um. Let them let them want. <laughs> okay. Um. Great. Can we? So we're going to need to get closer. We're going to need to get closer in order to get some better scans. Uh, unfortunately so. Um, I mean, it's a daring decision to go and make. We don't even know if they're hostile. Uh, but as long as we stay within acceptable, as I'm told, parameters, it shouldn't be too dangerous for our ship. But they're in danger? Oh, definitely. Copy that. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Anytime soon. You arrive on the bridge. Yes. Uh, Taeon uh, arrives on the bridge and just as form as possible, back straight, head mm. up. It says, Captain. Commander. Yes. Uh, I've got some interesting information that you will need to consider. That is, we've gotten a warning through that we've got some D7s that have been stolen recently and that might be near our system. Now, it also sounds like we just got some anomalous entity in the space of our trinary star system. I'm wondering if this might be one of these ships, but we're looking for six at a time that have been stolen. Interesting. They're these some of the Klingon ships. They're very old. Why would anyone want to steal them? I don't know. I'm sure there's always reasons to steal. Um, but I wouldn't know them. And so I was... <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, um, obviously we don't want to engage, but we yeah. want this to be on our radar, so to speak. Um, and to make sure that we're staying safe, it's something that you ought to know. No, well, thank you for letting me know. I'll talk to the rest of the security team, make sure everyone's ready just in case. Um, I assume we're going to be getting closer to get a better scan. There might be other, the other ships around the stars. Well, it sounds like it might be dangerous to get closer. At least that's what our science officers let me know. Okay. Um, but... What do you think, Commander? Well, we're out here specifically to observe the traveling star system. That's correct. So I think it makes sense for us to focus on that and just keep an eye out. I don't think it'll be any issue if we scan and just so happen to find these ships in the process, but I don't think it makes much sense or very wise for us to go out of our way to do so. Now, unfortunately, it seems like this ship might be in danger. <laughs> There's a pause. Captain, do you think we should help this ship? I'm asking if you think we should help this ship. A tumbleweed rolls across. <laughs> Everybody on the bridge is just watching the newbie. The new chief of security being grilled by the captain. I think we are unfortunately not quite equipped to do much when it comes to helping a ship, especially if it's something like a D7. Now, if they're in danger because of their proximity to these stars, we do have things such as tractor beams to get them into safety. Knowing the, the strength of the tra tractor beams and knowing the size of a D7. If that D7 even tried to pull away from you, you would be pulled along with it. Okay. Um, but if it's, <laughs> if it's just drifting, you would be able to hold on to it. The, the tractor beam strength of the Nova class is the same as a runabout. It's really not strong at all. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure the tractor beam would be much help, especially if they're actively moving towards okay. this ship. Well, if they're floating, maybe. But uh, Noted. Uh, I have intentions, perhaps, to reach out in communications and make sure that they are all right and don't need any assistance. I think that's a good course, Captain. Oh, thank you, Commander. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's a lot of... <laughs> mm. <laughs> You're your zen going, mm, find a zen, find a zen. <laughs> okay, um, so Captain, what are your orders? Great. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
is it is it unusual for me to call everyone to the bridge? No, it's, not at okay, all. Okay, great. Uh, can I get my officers, my chiefs, to the bridge, please? Right away, sir. Would Dale stay in engineering? That no. includes okay. you. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Chief Odutin. Um, there's a pause. I, <laughs> yeah, maybe you hear me come in and go, does that mean... Yes, it also means you. The constrictors aren't actually... Uh, well, surely your crew is capable. Are yeah. they not? Yeah, I'll, I'll see you on the bridge, Captain. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> That's the engineering crew as you leave. It's like, <laughs> yeah. You'll start talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you assemble on the bridge. Um, your science department has been tracking mm -hmm. the thing. You're still too far away to know exactly what's going on. Who yes. Is, who is in charge of communications? How does that work? So exactly? communications could be run by either a um, operations officer. Oh. Or a security officer can also handle it. There's a security terminal that can handle all internal communications, external communications. Mm, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically the, 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 the two sort of heads of roles that we're, we're missing technically mm -hmm. would be a chief of operations of some kind, but that can be handled by security and engineering. Tayon, you're, and, much, you're much more social um, than I am. Am I? Do you want to be on communication? Your friend, you talk about pastimes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just and, stats and, and, wise. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> security is at stake. Yes, can I get you at your security terminal? Uh, getting ready Sir? to open up communications with this uh, entity, if we are within range to do so. The you are. The ship, the, oh, okay, we can talk to you. Yep. Does, it, <laughs> does the, um, uh, the signature of the ship resemble a D7? Like, would a D7 even be able to survive mm. that amount of radiation? But surely not. D7 does a special sort of like radiation plating, right? Sure. Well, Klingon ships were not particularly designed to withstand scientific phenomenon but yes um i'm going to need you to make a more refined scan on the ship itself please so again this would be a uh, reason and science check cool with the ship assisting as mm -hmm. well. how unusual is it that any ship could even be surviving um they, they, they should be cooking at this point right I think. well they're yeah. a few minutes away from being cooked if they right. don't stop Mm. Basically, your ship could pull alongside them, and you guys would be okay for maybe ten minutes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you'd have to pull back. So we're kind of telling no them, to, "Hey, mm -hmm. pull yeah. back! You're in the yeah. danger zone." Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend one of our group. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how do we get this back? Uh, extra you, successes. You earn extra successes, and you convert the bonus momentum back into. Do we? Ah, oh, so I could have spent the bonus momentum. So we can yes, turn bonus momentum. But you can, only, we can only ever have six. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, okay. I will remember that for momentum. when I yeah. earn additional momentum in the future. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to use that to roll three. No. I made that same <gasps> mistake. It's six in total or two per player. Or Ooh. I get two threat per player. So I have eight threats. Okay, great. Yeah, spend it, spend it. Mm. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to roll those 3d20 trying to get under nice. 17. Your and those are two fives and the third. So nailed it. Mm. Yeah, nailed please, it. Please roll for the ship. All right, but the ship needs uh, to roll 2d20s. 2d20s. Just for the sensors. Yes. Uh, 13. That's one left. That is a pass, right? Yeah, we yeah. have two successes over here. Brilliant. Okay, so that's so five. Got that total. Bonus momentum. And bonus uh, momentum. Up to you what you want to do with it. Okay. I'm going to... Sorry, it's actually not. It's three because you have high resolution sensors. <gasps> Yay. Uh, we're going to put two into the pool. Sweet. All so right. replacing so those two nice. that, that have been spent. And let's hold on to this last one and see how things go. Um, mm -hmm. So your focus scan on this ship reveals that it could be a D7 cruiser. Mm. The thing that's unusual about it, however, is that it is moving. Yeah, it's still under its own power. It's not drifting. Yes, but no. the power, the 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 um, ion trail that is is leaving mm -hmm. does not appear to be coming from the two wings, which is where the ion the the uh, impulse drives are based. Mm -hmm. It appears to be coming from the underside of the ship, which oh. is odd. Well, this is fascinating. Could something have hijacked it? Yes, I would say either this thing has been kind of a scrap constructed. Maybe they're taking the shell and have changed the guts out to do what it needs to do, or there is something limpeting on the bottom that's moving it around. It's Either not... way, I guess we can need to give it a call. Though. Wait, wait, if something's able to drag that thing, it can fling the javelin to that star like it's some kind of... I don't know, I can't think of an analogy. Yeah, that's slingshot, sure. Well, uh, right now we're keeping our distance, don't worry. We're just gonna send a little hello. Everyone will just keep it cool, keep it chill. 
You will have to spend your bonus momentum or you will need to convert it. Okay. Uh, let's, for both my sake and people who are learning the system for the first time, uh, <laughs> go over, hey, this is what this is for. Uh, what are the things that I can spend this momentum on? I can ask a follow-up question. I know I can do you that. You can indeed. You can, you can uh, spend it to change a trait, mm -hmm. uh, environmental trait. Um, you can buy D20s with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not in combat. Um, you could keep the initiative. You could take an extra major action. So you sure, could scan sure, sure. something else or mm. you could do some other kind of science yes, thing. Could you see what exact... Are you able to sense do a scan on what is exactly on the underbelly of that? Yes, I think that is a fabulous yeah. follow-up question to do, to do. So we have that as a follow-up question. We get, um, with the kind of like main screen turn on kind of energy, I've watched episodes of the show, <laughs> um, uh, we get like a, a, a zoom in yeah. haunts. What is that? Sure. <laughs> on, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, we, we look at this unusual ion trail and what might be physically attached mm -hmm. To, to the ship that's moving through. Again, it's a very blurry response that of you're course. getting back because of your distance. Um, it is an impulse engine mm. that has been bolted on to the underside of this D7 cruiser, quite a powerful one that it's able to move the cruiser. Uh, Captain, I would like you please to give me, um, what would this be? What would this be? Uh, I'm gonna say, give me a Daring um, security. Okay. You gotta roll under a 14. The DC here is one. Okay, mm. go. You got this. I believe in you. That's a. Ooh, what's your daring? That's not looking good. That's a 14 good. and a 16. And you needed to get? Under 14? It's not meat, right? It's underneath. Meat or under. Oh, meat meat or okay, so hey! Yeah. One, six, two, two. Exactly. Great. I thought it was going to be As like needed. the orchids all over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one saw that. Dusting the <laughs> pollen. Yeah. yeah. Um, you think that you recognize the design of that impulse engine. Um, given your past, uh, it might be called a jacker impulse drive. And it's a very crude impulse engine that basically you, 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 it, it magnetizes itself to the target ship and then you can remotely pilot it. Mm. Yeah, that looks like a jacker impulse system to me. It's horrible. Mm. Look at the thermionic accelerators. They're on the outside? Who did this? Maniacs. People make do with what they can get their hands on. <laughs> Dropping the smile uh, very briefly, though, ten. You know, if uh, it's being piloted remotely, I would probably guess that whatever is on that ship is probably not there willingly, especially if it's being directed directly into the star. I don't think they are uh, long for this if we don't find some way to pull them back, okay. if you want to. Agreed. Let's try and get comms up, stat. Or the captain. Shall we move? Shall okay. we begin moving closer to it? We don't have much yeah, time. Yes. Uh, uh, let's let's very slowly and not aggressively move our ship a the little bit. Closer. Helmsman is sitting there quietly and trying to work out not aggressively <laughs> <laughs> with emotion, you know. <laughs> fast, not, but not, not too fast. An, not an alarm. If you were on the receiving ship, not in an alarming approach, mm -hmm. but in a way that gets us slightly closer. Legato, come on. <laughs> The helmsman just sets the course at a quarter impulse straight <laughs> yeah. towards the ship. That's yeah. their their interpretation mm -hmm. of it. Okay. You're starting to move closer. You open up comms. Yep. Comms is, does not require a roll. It is not difficult. Okay. You open up a, a broad hail to the ship, and almost immediately there is a static sort of image coming through. Mm. Um, it's obvious that the, the, just their proximity to the stars is causing huge amounts of interference to mm. subspace communications and all that kind of stuff. Is there so any way to it's, clean this it's up? It's static, and you can see a figure in amongst the static. Mm -hmm. oh. And um, the the audio is just an absolute absolute mess. Can I decontaminate the holographic receiver? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Look at you throwing I'm out all of these. I'm developing yeah, the skill of looking it. down yeah. at the Trekna Babble sheet <laughs> yeah. like, and wow. then snapping back. No absolutely. Idea what absolutely. You're I love it. Yeah, Chief, <laughs> Chief Oda Tan, can you, can, you, can you clean this up? 
<laughs> decontaminate it. Can you decontaminate, you can yeah. decontaminate the, the hologram? Sure. Okay, <laughs> we're doing this. That would require a control engineering check. Please. Hey, that's my stat. That's a 17. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. All right, well, the difficulty is only two. Uh, hang on. Use a moment. May remove one d20 from engineering tasks for one automatic success. That's oh. procedural compliance. Boop. So I'm just so trying to get 16. Get the one and done. That's a five pass. Hey. That's it. That's actually a crit because yeah, it's because it's my engineering oh, five or equal to. No, so is it, are is you your focus, focus on this? Uh, wait. Oh no, no, I right. definitely do not. Not mm. not in decontamination. No, in holographic. No. No. Yeah, <laughs> you just skip that particular course. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So with you sort of boosting the signal and decontaminating the holographic receivers, which classic uh, <laughs> classic approach. Yeah. Suddenly, the image kind of fixes itself, and you see this very old-looking Klingon mm. standing on, it looks like the ruins of a bridge. And the, I say that because the background, you can see there's panels that have been completely removed, there's bits of cables hanging down. Um, he is not wearing the traditional Klingon warrior's armor. Okay. He looks to be wearing a janitor's outfit. Oh, no. And he says, I require assistance immediately. That's a good thing. Absolutely. This is Captain Samara Renault of the USS Javelin. We would be happy to assist you. How did you get to be in this situation? And uh, are we clear to approach you? Uh, yes. I do not know. The ship started moving uncontrollably. Oh, I see. Uh, I believe it is something. So the the impact thruster on the bottom of your ship is not there by your design. It was placed there by thieves. Copy that. Uh, we would be happy to assist you, uh, however we can. Um, we will be approaching you shortly, and please do not resist any tractor beams that may come your way. I have no. The ship has no power. It has life support, and that's it. How many people are on board? Just me. Oh, just. All right, um, great. <laughs> now, can I ask, uh, what area of the ship are you in right now? Are you in the bridge? I'm on the bridge. Maybe. Can you s Maybe on that? Right, yeah. Do you have a, a transporter pad aboard your ship? No. Okay, well, I'm sure that we can locate you upon yours. Um, fantastic, just stay put. Is it okay if we transport you to ours just in case we can't get the ship? Safe? Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Um, stand by to be beamed shortly. He sort of stands back and, <laughs> and looks up. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Who's in I the think you know that. transporter <laughs> room? Um, can I get a uh, can I get a transport immediately for one Klingon aboard a ship at approximately <clears throat> these coordinates? Hmm. Uh, it is in, on a moving vehicle. In terms of using traits to kind of like benefit roles, right? Since I've ga gained that trait, like the gravity of the situation, and I understand what the effects the stars and stuff are having mm -hmm. on. Yes, is there some way I can? Because it feels like doing a teleport, not accounting for that, is a good way to put you in a star. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So the the um, because you have got this as a as a trait, because you have got it as a positive trait. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is reduced by one, right? In order to do this, so, so the difficulty to beam a Klingon out of a—it's only moving under impulse, but that's not the problem. It is the gravimetric distortions that these three stars mm -hmm. are generating. Mm -hmm. The difficulty normally would be three, so in your case, the difficulty is now only two, two to, to beam him out. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you still want to make the roll on that, or I'm, or shall I? Do is it, it a science roll or an engineering roll to do? Or yeah, or even you? Technically, I, I it's operations, that... so it would fall under security. Mm. Oh, oh no. This okay. <laughs> The security role in order but to... But it uh, doesn't... Anyone can do it. Look, this is... Uh, Commander, this is under your purview, being with the safety of uh, this Klingon who we are now going to be bringing aboard. However, you might need some assistance from uh, either our science or engineering crew. I'm more than happy to assist. I'm, I'm more than happy to take your help. If we remove the one survivor from the ship, we can let the ship sail into the sun, which would be a mercy. <laughs> uh, funnily enough... 
uh, Votin um, does uh, not say, but thinks, no, agreed. It's pretty hideous. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, no, we, we can talk about that. No, no. Glad to have your All back right, on All right, please, this. Uh, both of you assist Commander Taeon in this. Mm. Let's get this man to safety. I did check how help rolls work. Essentially, yeah. I do a separate roll and add to yours. But, you only, one of us, but only one of you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess if oh, I assist, yeah. it lowers the difficulty. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it makes sense it for me to assist if that's okay. okay. Yeah, because sure. you're compensating for the Officer Vote and you do this. <laughs> oh, um, oh um, yes, no, but very, very well, sir. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to telepathically nicely. beam to your head. Don't get excited. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would this be? What does that be for this? Um, so this is going to be a control and security. Oh, mm. I got a 16 for that. Uh, and I have a 13 for that, okay. so I'm still pretty good And then that. we can use ship sensors for science. That's right. Oof. Oh, dear. I did get a 6. Okay. So there's one, one hit. I got one a more. 18 and an 8, so I got uh, one, one success. success. The, yeah. ship, is a hit. the ship does not help. Under okay. 15, <laughs> under a 13 <laughs> 16. 16, yeah. Two, did you and you roll two? two. But that, I thought it was sensors. Is this sensors? Oh, no, this is not sensors. You're quite right. Sorry. No, it's ship sensors for science, but it's both. Okay. Yep. Um, I also have an ability called, I mean, it doesn't really make sense here since I got assists, but if I, uh, it's called self-reliant. Whenever you succeed at a task where you <laughs> did not purchase additional dice by spending momentum right. or adding to a threat, uh, you generate bonus momentum equal to the task difficulty. Okay. Um, so it's just get an additional two. Yeah, bonus that's fair. You get two. Mm. And I think the way that even though um, uh, Votin is helping you, um, it's it's like played. It's like stage played where Votin is like in the middle background, slightly out of focus, and is still doing stuff. Yeah, but you're, the camera is very firmly on you. Yeah. yeah. Wait, but how many uh, successes did we? Get? We got two successes, so exactly yes. the number needed. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes. yeah I was... Never punished. <laughs> exactly. Never punished. Exactly. Uh, well, because exactly. of my ability, we automatically get. Uh, That's right. Momentum Great. to the difficulty, so we just get to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We passed every roll so far. So, so far. No. <laughs> oh, there was a whole issue yes. fallen in your head. Yes, yeah. we have. <laughs> uh, now, as you have got the bonus momentum, um, what would you like to do with that bonus momentum? Um, God, what would I like to do? So we're just beaming someone out. Yes. Do you want to? Um, because you are beaming someone out. Mm -hmm. You can gain some additional information about the area that you are beaming him out of. You can gain additional information about him, or uh, you could convert that into momentum, or... You can spend two to make it a trait. You can make it a trait, yeah. Well, I'm um, not sure what trait you yeah, are. Trait, yeah. We, mm, I, I, I would like, I'll spend one momentum, I think it just costs one to do, to ask a question and like learn a bit more about the state of the ship. Mm -hmm. oh, um, oh, mm. yeah. I think Adutin is just going to, related to what question we can ask, Adutin is going to uh, sidle up to the captain and say very quietly, um, so that nobody else can hear, um, these ships were stolen. Do you trust this, Crayon? We can assume that he was part of those that stole it. Either way, he's on his own. We're about to find out. Mm. If he did steal it, he would do a very good job. It's about to fry up in that atmosphere. Hmm. I'm not sure I trust having a poor criminal on the ship any more than a talented one. Let's not assume he's a criminal before we know the facts, all right? Okay. You are spending... Yes, on... Uh, I would like to know a bit more about the ship, the state of the <laughs> ship. Because it seems like it's in ruin. Can I tell... Can my question be what seems to have been the cause of this ruin? Obviously? Absolutely. This ship looks to you as if it has been part of a decommissioning process. Okay. Mm. It's been it's gutted. scrapped. There is something unusual, though. The mm. computer core is very active. Mm. Can, can we also get a tractor beam going, seeing if we can pull it out? That it requires that you can you can do that, but then you will be within the radiation zone, and if you stay in that zone for more than ten minutes, you will all start to take severe so issues. We know for a fact that it's not powerful enough to pull it out. We can, you wouldn't be able to pull the ship back. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, but you'd be able to stop it from moving forward. Yeah. I guess you'd, you'd have to 
pop yeah. the whatever uh, the engine, engine is yeah. pushing yeah. it to before you can pull it any. But Dune is not suggesting that because I don't want to get uh, the radiation will just play havoc on the javelin, and also mm. I want this engine destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Um, and you're so lost. are you beaming him aboard? Yes, I'm beaming him aboard. Um, Where are you beaming him to? Starfleet Protocol would say that it would be to some transporter pad with a security detachment already in mm-hmm. position. I'd do that. Call the lance. I would right. let, okay, you're helping Taeon right now, so then I will ask. Um, <sighs> Lieutenant. Chief? Chief? Lieutenant? Odatan. <laughs> I'll tell all of a sudden. Engineer. <laughs> Engineer. Um, uh, could we also get a quick sensor? scan on whether there are other life forms aboard that ship. Mm, I was thinking the same. Um, can I do it just a, yeah, looking for life signs on board sure. the ship? Absolutely. I'm going to convert this. Reason and science. Into, uh, momentum. Okay, mm-hmm. sure. Momentum. Perfect. How many difficulties am I looking at? Um, on this, just two. I'll mm. roll the ship. Oh, we got to, no, I get, no, I get yeah, the ship assist? Great. You do? Yeah. yeah. I'll also burn a, I'll have to spend a momentum. It seems hey, it's there to be spent. Yeah. Easy come, easy go. Um, okay, so that gives me a third dice, and we're looking yes. at two successes. What am I rolling to do? Um, it is reason and senses. Reason and sense, but for my department. Ah, uh, science. Oh, that's Sorry. a crit. Science. So. Oh, uh, beautiful. Two, three. Three. Two more. Four, four five. five. Oh, look at that. Five, that gives you three. <laughs> I'll put two straight into the pool and then have the one. Have the one. Uh, any okay. life signs on the ship? There are no other life signs on the ship. However, the ship appears to be carrying quite the cargo. Oh. Uh. <laughs> uh. I think you, you and I are both I mean, looking you know, at the wait, console and we both go. Uh. You said that and it was like the goose was like, yeah, there's probably more people. There's more. Th- okay. <laughs> Are they yeah, what, what is, it, what what is the cargo? cargo? The cargo appears to be a... <laughs> the cargo appears to be... Uh, lead? Hmm. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> 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 like, as in it's carrying nearly four and a half tons of solid lead. What would happen if the lead was... Would... There's no reason... That's uh, four and a half tons. That's not enough to affect the star, any of the stars in any way. No. It will literally liquefy probably within a hundred thousand kilometers. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, lead? Scanning through lead being difficult, assumedly. That's what, yeah, Correct. I was going to say, is that mm. more like is the assumption that it's hiding uh, something? Yeah. Mm. I the, think a uh, yeah. dude is so practically minded, I would just be like, lead. Four and a half times Useless. Lead. The market price of that. Yeah, yeah. Not be <laughs> <laughs> okay, taking my, uh, <laughs> okay. my history of knowing um, kind of how smugglers work in uh-huh. the system. Is this something that I would worry that there is possibly more people yeah. even within there? Yeah. Four and a half, well, people maybe not so much because lead lined cases where the lead lining is sufficient to block Federation sensors is pretty thick. It's about four inches of lead. That's, that's mm-hmm. yeah, I'm breathing right. in there would be hard. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but power signatures for life support, for example, those are difficult to mask. Lead containers usually is for transporting things that really don't need any kind of environment whatsoever. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna... Weapons, uh, raw ore, that kind of stuff. I'll say. Yeah. Would, are there weapons that would pose a risk to the system here? Um, no weapons specifically in terms of ores and that sort of thing. Well, that's a big science question. Big science question. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just relieved we don't have to get closer if it's only lead. I, we, I, Chief Odotan, you think that there's only lead? You don't think that the lead is perhaps there for another purpose to block another? You know what? Okay, this is a science question. Um, <laughs> mm. Chief. I had science. They could be using it to smuggle things. Oh, no. Chief Stolux, if you were going to have a best guess, is there anything of danger that you imagine could be in there that we need to stop this ship for, or are we good to just let it keep going? Hmm. I said to think. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, eyes roll back as we enter Mind Palace now. Uh, sure. Is there, is there a, a, a thinking this through? I have crime investigation as one of my focuses. I wonder if this is within... If you could see the lead, yeah. that would help. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. And and what is the status of is uh, is the security reports the Klingon has arrived and they've mm-hmm. taken to, taken him to medical. Okay. He is severely injured. I take the medical. Hang on. Severely injured. 
Mm -hmm. I don't, why would he be injured? When he was on his own. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps just from the radiation. Why would he... Probably from the if, jackers. I don't imagine they were very... How would, the ja how would the jackers have got whatever the lead line smuggling thing is onto the ship? We had another, no other life forms detected. You know what? I'm going to have a conversation with him real quick and keep an eye on the uh, position. Uh, Captain, do we continue to head towards the ship? Says the helmsperson. Desperate that you don't use some kind of emotional explanation. <laughs> <laughs> do it, but with kindness. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's smooth the roll on that a little bit. Um. <laughs> it's poor helmsman is just desperately sitting there waiting for something. Um, we'll give yourself that. I'll be right back. Yeah, let's let's hold. Let's hold off on that. It seems uh, more dangerous than what it's worth. Um, We're to hold position where we are, sir. Hold position. Mm -hmm. uh, but but. <laughs> But with feeling, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a holding with a hold penchant tension. Hold a um, position, but stay ready. I mean, always stay ready, you know. <laughs> Staying ready, sir. Uh, wait, uh, so you're going, you're off to medical? I would love to have a chat with our new guys. Uh, you know, I tend to agree with you. Let's see if we can get some more information. Hmm. Uh, yeah, there's come, a. I'm coming with you. Well. Absolutely. <laughs> after <laughs> after all, I I do I I'm, I am a foot. I can't tell you to speaks. do anything you don't want to do. Um, Odizan. Sir? <laughs> yes? Uh-oh. <laughs> are, you, are you trying to think rather than speak? What is it? I, I thought that's what you preferred. I, <laughs> I don't think Odizan is that awful. I think, I think I'm, just, I'm just focused. Sorry, sir. The magnetic constrictors, the variance is down to 89%, sir. That's below the... <laughs> I think... I, sorry. Yeah, there must have been some interference. You said it was below ninety percent. It's just dropped to eighty nine percent now. Yeah. So have you already left the bridge? Yeah, I'm walking out. So or do, I'm, I'm mid leaving. Yeah. Do I have the bridge then? Who has the bridge? Oh yeah. Um... <laughs> I would say Tay on the new still in the bridge. <laughs> mm. um... Since uh, I didn't specifically ask, I, I was about to ask, oh, do you want yeah. to come with? You're, and then the captain was like, I'm going. You so. left the bridge, or you're not? You're still on the bridge? Yeah, because Commander Tayon, uh, I'm leaving the bridge to you. Yes, sir. Um, uh, okay, good. Wait, hang on. You, you left the bridge to Tayon as opposed to me? That makes, does that, oh no, you are right, me. That's fair. <laughs> yes. Just and I to... wink at you on the way out. Nice. See, this is people's person. Um, <laughs> Man, people are so petty about their rank. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. This um, is what you're all saying in the turbo lift whilst mm, you're waiting. I think I just, so in which case, when I hear that the comments are down below 90 percent, I just disappear. Mm -hmm. um, right. I'm just gone, head straight down to engineering. All right, you're heading to engineering. It's not a big ship, there's only six decks, so the turbo lift conversations are really short. Mm -hmm. uh, you're heading to medical, deck two, you're heading to engineering, deck six. And so very, very quickly, the two of you arrive at medical. Mm -hmm. uh, the chief medical officer is someone that we do not have. Ooh. I do not know if that's a supporting character that you guys want to create we or can not. Invent a you gun. only have three. I'm happy for them to be an NPC. Oh, I, I would, I would love to. I do feel mm -hmm. medical's yeah, important. Yeah, so. Someone should. Oh, wow. Yikes. All right. Uh, My okay. only request is that whoever's doing medical they're doing the NPC or the supporting is character. Also in the is not immediately in the scene. So <laughs> yes, who, sure. you two have gone yeah. to medical. So yeah. either me or Quinn. So mm -hmm. yes, either the two of you will have the chief medical officer as your supporting Oops. character. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Do you does anything come to your mind? Um, not off my head. I'm down for you two. I just don't want to kick. I just can't. Just someone gives me like a foundational personality for the chief med medical. Of, of chief medical. What, are the, what is the ship's doctor like? Um, I like the idea of it being like um, they kind of scary. Like you, you don't want to. I don't want to be another Christopher uh, Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be another. Um, uh, maybe maybe it's on the other side Scared. of it. Like they are, they're Scared, like mildly no. saccharine about it. Like how you would if a, a kid were, was going to go like and see a the children's doctor. doctor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. They, they have children's a they have doctor. a cheerful serenity about them. Yeah. that's disarming, if not patronizing. I was going to say the kind way, like, but you're yeah. Yeah. Mm. the kind of way you're like if they say that they're, they're not angry, they're disappointed. It actually kind of really hurts. So you just mm. oh. Person. Okay, right. Well, just pediatric sweet. doctor on a ship with no children. Sunniest demeanor ever. Okay. Okay, but but the military version of that. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll work with that. All right, the rules are down there for you to create a sporting character, which okay, is great. one of if the you, great you things. You can do other scenes. I will. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's one of the great things about the Star Trek mm. system is that we get to add in sporting characters while things are going on. So that means 
that's engineering done. That's medical done. That means it's all on you. All on me. Yes. So whilst you are sitting in the captain's chair, um, two things happen. Mm -hmm. The interim science officer who has taken over, mm -hmm. as you have headed off, reports that the Klingon ship, sir, uh, it appears as if it's accelerating. Accelerating. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we know that the Jack is remote controlled. Can we... Is there any way to see if we can figure out where, where the Jack is getting the signal from? It needs to be remotely controlled from somewhere. Uh, I will attempt to do that now, sir. Thank Which you. is you making me a reason and science <laughs> check with the ship mm. assisting. My reason and science is not great. Um, and this is a difficulty four. Four? Oh. Yes. <gasps> to try and track a, a together. hidden we have source. We do have a lot of momentum. momentum. Yes. Yeah, cut roll under a 10 <laughs> to get a okay. success. Um, Fine. Flips, let's go. Yeah, you've got, you've got maximum momentum at the moment. That is true, yeah. I will, I will use... I spent two momentum so, to get two more die. No, so it oh, works. Well. It's one momentum gets you one die. And then two. And then two, two momentum gets you the second one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you want to yes. spend the full pool for three? Um, yeah, I have to. Just I, we kind of have to one. with my... With my... What I'm working with, we kind of have to. Yeah. I'm okay All with right. that. You spend all your momentum. You've got three extra dice. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and boy. will you, Captain, roll for the ship, please? It is yes. a sensor check, so two die there. Sensor check. Difficulty of four. Here that yes. will help me. Absolutely not. Okay. Okay. You got two okay. successes over here. Nice. Yeah. So you only need two. I got three successes here. Brilliant. Hey. That gives you one bonus Ooh. momentum, which you can use for additional information or not. So the remote signal is coming from outside of the star system, mm. um, but there is two-way communication that is going on, and you have the ability to tap into that communication <gasps> if you wish to. Will it be noticed if we do? No. Okay. I'll, I'll say, um, can you see if you can tap into the communications, listen to what's going on? Uh, it's a data stream, sir. Oh, okay. Can you display what, um, what data is being sent across? Yes, sir. So as the screen comes up, it is trajectory data for mm. the Klingon ship. It looks as if the Klingon ship is going to sail into the very epicenter of all three of the stars. Mm. And all three stars, as they are in their orbit, will be at their closest point as this ship gets to that center point. And that's going to happen within the next 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah. I was in the world of Peter Gale, Chief Medical Officer. What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, we we found that the the ship is accelerating. Yeah. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Um, we so I was like, hey, there's, if this is remote control, we should be able to see where the remote control is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, chase back oh, great, it. great, great. Um, it seems to be coming outside of the solar system. Found the data um, stream. Oh, yeah, nice. found the data stream. It seems like it, the ship is heading towards the center of the three stars. So and it's, it's going to be at the point where the three stars are closest to that. So point. are these? Is it? Are, are, have criminals? Criminals stole these ships, and other criminals have hijacked the stolen ship. Would is maybe smuggling something to maybe fly it into the sun? That's is that what's happening? Why? Mm. Why? It's uh, <laughs> until we know what the material is on the inside, but hopefully we might find out. Indeed. Um, oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, so we have a chief medical officer. Uh, Peter Gale. Yeah. He's from Peter he's Gale. From Space Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, he's very friendly. It's new, new Liverpool. Okay. Yeah. New <laughs> <laughs> it's a planet where everyone's a scouser. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes. What's the scene? Uh, Chief Gale, what's the status? What is well, the status? Oh, wow, so. I got... <laughs> <laughs> I became British. I became British. Uh, Chief Gale, what's the status on our visitor here? Uh, well, right, so the Klingon was brought in because he was suffering from minor radiation burns mm. as well as a severe blunt force trauma to the back of the head. Oh, what did I tell you? you? You're um, not here. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, great. Uh, is he is he restrained? Is he... No, he's currently on a bio bed. He came voluntarily, uh, <laughs> slightly groggily. He definitely has a concussion. He's been knocked out. Um, okay. Our guest. He's he's a little bit cooked and he's had a bash to his head, but he'll live. All right, that's good to hear. Um, sir, are you? Are you all right? You are the captain of this vessel. I am the captain, yes. Uh, captain. You must retrieve this ship. Uh, what is on your ship, sir? Nothing. Everything. There's nothing on your ship. We, we, no, uh, sir. Uh, 
our sensors detected some thick lead in your cargo. That is... Um, why would there be lead on the ship? Hmm. Uh, one of my talents is an uh, open book. Oh, I don't have it. You have one floating. Do you want to put that oh, back into yes, the Oh, yes, I'll put that into Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bestie. I, yeah, I make a supporting yeah. character and yeah. it's all gone. Yeah. It's all gone. <laughs> Uh, yes, I will spend one momentum uh, to ask the gem about the emotional state of the character entering the scene. So, in the process of, there is obviously the, oh, things are ter going terribly, but there is a difference between things are going terribly and I have been betrayed, or versus things are going terribly. Uh, why would this happen to me? Right. John janitor of the ship <laughs> <laughs> his emotional state is severe and utter embarrassment mm -hmm. and despair mm -hmm. as a klingon mm -hmm. he has lost his honor his ship has been stolen he has been disabled in combat and not killed in combat which mm -hmm. means that mm -hmm. whatever little honor he may have had as a janitor mm. has now gone he couldn't even protect a derelict ship mm. getting reasonably close my dear, you may have thought you have lost everything, but actually you are in a position to recover at least a little bit of your self-worth if you cooperate. Otherwise, there'll be nothing for you. So it answer the captain's question of me. Wholeheartedly. Thank you, darling. You are a big lord. Uh, yeah, at this kind of like close, basisoids uh, look almost exactly like humans, and the only difference is, is that they don't have an iris; it's just one black. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I think at this range, it's very obvious. Yeah. Whereas normally, with the hair over one eye, there is a degree of obscuring specifically what alien species vo yeah. votin is. And yeah, yeah, in range, I could guess. Mm. <laughs> what are your questions, Captain? Were there, was there anyone else aboard this? It's always been you on this ship alone? I have been working on the Valak for some time, taking her apart. When did this ship get hijacked? I am uncertain as I could not access the ship's computer. It has been running some calculation or other, and I was locked out. You don't know when it started moving? What is the current star date? <laughs> current star date is 47065 then I would say at least three days have passed the last I recall I was at the Granat shipyard stripping this ship In there was an unusual uh, I heard a noise in the cargo bay okay you heard a noise in the cargo. Bay. I went to oh. investigate, and then that is it. I remember nothing except waking up in the cargo bay. With this injury? That is correct. Okay, that's not promising. Okay, and you were alone. This is, it was just your ship. There were no others with you. Not on the old D7s, no. I am old enough to still remember working on these ships. That is why I was responsible for taking them apart. All right. The Doctor, would you please give me a reason and medicine check? My terrible stat. Actually, it's not that bad. Yes. <laughs> I'd love to use momentum, but ooh, ooh. that's a single success. Single success is all you need. The only unusual thing about the Klingon, aside from the mild radiation and the blunt force trauma concussion, uh, which must have been caused by a significantly strong opponent. This is mm. not a human that could have done this. Klingon skulls are particularly thick. So <laughs> to knock a Klingon out would be considerable strength. Yeah. Uh, Romulan, Vulcan, uh, Android. Mm. Um, could it have been another Klingon? Could have been another Klingon. Could have been a Cholnath. There are a couple of species that have got significant strength, but it's it would re require a specific species. Um, okay. Other than that, he has an unusual residue of tricobalt hmm. on his jackets. Tricobalt hmm. is a subspace explosive. Mm. Okay. Oh, a subspace explosive residue on his jacket. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, 
Oh, sorry. We are on uh, limited time here, but I, I do find you can stay here and uh, continue your questions. I think we need to go do something about your ship that is still hurtling towards this star. I yes. was unable to disable the device. It is external and without any space uh, armor. It was a space suit. I was unable to... To approach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you at least see the uh, lead box in the cargo bay? Did you explore the ship once you came to? When I came to, my first impulse was to head to the bridge to see what limited information the ship's scanners and computer would be able to give me. And you were locked out, yes. That is correct. Right. Yes, yeah, so there is a pretty good chance that uh, your uh, ship has been turned into a bomb of some kind, but we'll see what we can do. All right, and on that note, I will take my leave. Chief Gale, take good care of this guest. Uh, Captain. And I'll just walk up to, and brush some pollen off the small of your back, and then I'll flash you a thumbs up. Oh, but the orchids, orchids again, not to your it? taste. The orchids are fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for asking. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> they are great. Uh, These in my hands. To the bridge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, you're off to the bridge. Meanwhile, on the bridge, yep. the... Uh, Chief Operations, well, the Head of Operations Engineer, Ensign, is sitting there. Um, sir? Yes? There's a problem. What's the problem? <laughs> all the Margaret Ensigns are so <laughs> nervous <laughs> all the time. Have you met the senior staff? <laughs> <laughs> We're fine. Uh, there is an issue uh, with the communication that we intercepted. Yes, what's the issue? It's it, it's still now system, sir. Oh no. I've tried to purge <laughs> I've tried to purge the communication log. It won't. I immediately tap my communicator um and say uh would it be a Starlux or I think I'll reach out to the captain. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. The captain knows and what specialties I'm still learning about that. <laughs> so I tap my communicator, communi Captain. Uh, yes, Commander? I've got some news, some good, some <laughs> not so good. One, we figured out that the whoever's controlling the jacker is just outside the, fan, outside of the solar system. Uh, okay. Not so good news. It seems to be directing it towards the center of the three stars um, for who knows why. But the other... News, not so uh, you good. You said news. that there, what, there's more bad news. <laughs> yes, uh, Captain. Um, the other bad news is we reach into the communications going between the Jacker and whoever is controlling it to figure out its trajectory, and the communications won't leave the ship. We've tried to purge it, and it's not working. Oh, Lieutenant oh, Odetown is not. Yeah, happy. did Odetown try? I'm, I'm on my way. I'm in. I'm in the lift right now. Okay. Odetown's a captain. <laughs> Yes, Odetown? The magnetic constrictors, they're at 87% now. Now, you know that Starfleet regulation should be at 90%. So, so why are they at 87%? The radiation from the star systems. I'm really not sure whatever's in this ship can possibly be worth it. Okay, well, it sounds like it might be a, a moving bomb towards this star system that we're supposed to be surveying. Uh, well, There's going to be nothing left to survey if it gets to the center of the system. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, no, that would be... Okay, I have a bigger priority for you. Well... <laughs> What is the bigger priority? <laughs> there seems to be some data that has infected our systems. I need you to get that out. What? <laughs> I just, you know, you know from years of working with me that you don't need to say anything else. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, that's the end of the call. Yeah. Just shock and terror. Mm -hmm. And it, arrive on the bridge. Presumably. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. um, okay. We need to get, uh, we need to get that data system out of our systems. Oh, Are you in here? Now. Yeah, well, I'm on, on speaker. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm already picking up You know what? This. Yeah, on speaker. I'll just say this to the ship. We have a data stream that seems to have infected our ship system, so be on alert for that. Be aware of anything that seems unusual. Our engineers are on it and getting it out of our system as we speak, uh, as well as we need a way to extricate that ship out of there because we're unsure of... Uh, what its intentions may be <clears throat> off the speakers for the whole ship in the bridge 
Commander Tam, is there a possible way of targeting just the impulse on the bottom of that ship and getting it unfunctioning, if you catch my drift, without damaging the ship? I suppose I'll need to ask. We're knowing the... <laughs> knowing so, how... being the captain seems stressful. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have 13 stress. No, there we go. <laughs> That's true. So, to target that particular component, it's not a problem. But you need to be at short range. You're currently at extreme range. Mm. Captain, we need to be in short range. If you, if you don't want to destroy the D7, yeah, you need to be at short we range. You need to be at short range. Yeah. Okay. Because <clears throat> you can't use a photon torpedo. You need to use phases. Lieutenant Odaton. Yes, Captain. How long can we be close? You know what? This seems like a, a group call. <laughs> 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 Lieutenant Odaton. That actually should have been an email. I mean, I guess uh, <laughs> the, the two of us are also in the same room as you. So okay, we yeah, we're great. Oh, yeah, that happens in stuff. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it, yes, basically. Yeah. Um, how... How long do we need in order to target what we need to, and how long can we stay in proximity of the ship before we need to exit proximity? Uh, all right, so in order to target that thing, you see, you probably will need no more than a minute maximum. The problem is that the starship now is seven minutes away from its central point, and how long can you stay in proximity at this new range? Probably no more than two minutes. Can we shunt additional? I'll say I'll be able to do on comms. Um, recommend we push additional power to the shields and the radiation shielding on the ship. Uh, Chief Medical Officer Gale is going to jump in on that one and is going to need to give me a reason and medicine check for the for to wait. Hang no, on for to, the, know be. For, to know about the radiation. To know about the radiation. Yes. Oh, I was literally just full in the head of Otis. I was thinking about the radiation collapse, like yeah, damaging but, but the structure. Oh, sure, sure, sure. But this is where Chief Gale comes in. The, Chief you know, Gale no! gets a critical fail and a success. And a success, a complication. Mm -hmm. All right, so the okay. chief medical officer weighs in the two minutes of radiation. Mm -hmm. Even if you increase shields to maximum, it won't have any kind of, of impact on the radiation. Okay. And well, because of the complication, the radiation will start to cause hallucinations in most humanoid species. All right. Um, with that in mind, I would like to... <laughs> What if we we reroute power to our to our mm. engine so that we can move in and out quicker? We need to have everything programmed ahead of time so that we are not hallucinating anything that may happen to some of us. Might I make a suggestion, sir? Absolutely, please do. Um, in how you explained how you found out about the information yes. of the and ship time is trajectory, short. yes, uh, because it's two way and we were able to get access to it. Mm -hmm. Could we send alternate instructions? Could we override it and make the ship turn course? Ah, oh, that's such a good idea. I'll give it a try. Let's see why not. Marvellous. I have a bit of a risky idea. I don't tend to do this very often. Everything here is risky. Let's go. Mm. Uh, Votin moves away some of like the braided dreads of their hair and pulls a cable from behind their ear. Uh, they are a cyborg. They actually have a neural interface uh, uh, connection that's part of their ship. So they have bonus stuff to do when handling computer specific checks. Wow. Um, this is going to be more than a one individual job though, uh, Odoten, if you wouldn't mind working with me once more. Absolute, wait. <laughs> yeah, um, I, long pause and then uh, like you hear a, okay, but you can tell that <laughs> I'm doing something yeah, else. Yeah, 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 simultaneously. Yeah. Like, I'm going to take that as an emphatic yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you are seeing if you can uh, change the data stream information going back to that. If we can make it turn around or go back or okay, cancel that other... can you do this in the next 30 seconds? <laughs> <laughs> I will think my hardest. I love this. Get it mm. done. <laughs> and uh, yeah, pulling one long cable, like specifically styled so it blends in with the rest of the dreads. You wouldn't know it was there until it was highlighted. Uh, they sit down in one of the chairs and uh, uh, connect into. I guess you used a computer, the specific computer yeah. on the bridge to enter that kind of relay. And uh, Votin sits down and I suppose puts their cognizance on the line. To, to <laughs> um, wait, I'm going to just, just uh, uh, be like, again, distracted mm -hmm. doing something else. I'm going to say, um, Adun, we don't know what's in our system. It seems very dangerous to be plugging your own consciousness into it. It seems very dangerous to stay at this range, hallucinate, and drift into a sun. Okay. <laughs> Captain, do I take the ship in closer? 
We only have two minutes. And I yes, one we don't have a lot of time. So why don't you get you get that lined up so that we can strike as soon as we get in? I want you to pre-program so that no matter what we start seeing, we're in and out in that time frame, and you better get that shot when we are at the right place. Will do, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the single yellow <laughs> token. Is that, is that <laughs> determination? A determination. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, there's a thing that we can spend determination for. I yes. forgot. Uh, it aligns with your values. Mm. Yeah, let's yeah. see. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to uh, connect to the interface. If this was during combat, it would be like a quick action to do so, but right. not in that kind of circumstance. Uh, while I'm plugged in, I can re-roll one of my d20s. Um, but if the comp is damaged, I take a lot of feedback. So, uh, I... Yeah, I'm trying to... I think most of my skills have to do with... Ada, is there something in my commanding here mm -hmm. that can, um, I don't know, instill confidence in? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess you know the ship here? and the ship's accesses and things like that. You I know, might not have the permission to I do feel, certain I feel like pieces. in the TV episode of this, you know, you would be saying, like, you know, vote and do this, do it, do You on the computer, do it, do it, you do it, Like, Just this is, this is a full call yeah. press. And I, I, have a, I have a focus in, like, Combat maneuvering, so maybe only going mm. in and out very quickly and getting mm. that programmed. So it sounds like you're talking about nullifying the gravitational waves through our movement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could try and ride the waves. Sure. <laughs> uh, Just say anything. It's great. <laughs> it's yes, and come on, let's yes. go. Mm -hmm. So um, you can this. perform the assist action, mm -hmm. but for two characters at once, rather than just one character. Uh, you can direct, which is to spend one momentum, which you do not have, and select one ally <laughs> on the bridge who immediately attempts a single major action, and you assist them by I rolling see. 1d20. Mm. Or oh. you can rally, which is to inspire and coordinate the cr crew, that's what you'd be doing. and mm -hmm. this generates momentum. So I think that's what you should be doing, actually. Yes. Rally. Yeah. So I know you were saying you're not in, we're not in a combat situation, but we just have moved into one. Where time now, matters. Time yes. matters. Yes. So uh, in terms of initiative, love you rally. have initiative because this is a, uh, an, a situation. It's non-intelligent. It doesn't get to act first. Mm -hmm. So Captain, what are you doing? Okay, I would like to rally as I'm inspiring, coordinating the crew. We've got, uh, all right, uh, Chief Officer Stolix, you are going to be trying to clean up that data stream and send back some other coordinates for them. Try to and send it off constantly. Yes, absolutely. And uh, Commander, I Commander Teo. Just want to jump in here. Yes. In this combat round, only three of you can act. Mm. Oh, Why? Because you're ship size three. Huh. Okay. Oh, so your rally is an action. That's right. Really That's okay. I'll assist you. Okay. okay. All right. It, so, assuming that the, the tail has something to tail, what are you doing? I'm going to be firing. You're going to be firing. So can I maneuver the ship? Wait, wait, wait. Well, we're you're rallying, so that's fine. Rallying. Yeah. Wait, hang on. What are we firing at? The kind of like a. But, but the right. If we're able to. But if we In just, case that fails. In case it fails. Mm. Okay, okay, lovely. I mean, why would we possibly fail? I don't We're see excellent. us failing. Well, you're <laughs> you kind know, of brilliant. I, I'm I finding that know. out. <laughs> we have minutes. Not to take your moment in the spotlight, darling. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. We're it's, never punished. Yeah, the, ideal, <laughs> the ideal situation for security officers is for it to them never have to do their job. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Job. there we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm rallying. You're okay. rallying. So okay. my presence and command? Yes, so it is presence and command with a difficulty. to try and generate momentum. Correct. Here. The difficulty is zero. Okay. So oh. anything you generate okay. can I'll get be us turned into momentum. Also, I have follow my lead. So ideally, when I succeeded a task during combat or another perilous situation, this is it. I can spend determination. If I do, I can choose a single ally who can hear me, and the next task they attempt counts as having assistance from me using my presence and command as well. Ooh. Oh. Wow. So effectively you would be able and to you would be able to assist Yeah. Well, okay. And it says on this task, do not roll your assistance die it counts as having already rolled a one. So you're giving two successes. Wow. So the next person that is going to be really, really useful. If yeah. I succeed at this point. <laughs> <laughs> succeed. Is the yeah. paramount kind of the Yep. That's a seven. seven. Two successes. Nice. Two successes. All right. So that gives you two momentum. Two momentum. And so since I succeeded, um, I will spend my determination in order to give. Oh, I think. Mm. Uh, honestly, if, if that's okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm a backup plan. Yeah. I just don't want to use a backup plan. I, I, will, give, I will give Voten the... Uh, 
that one. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. assistance one. All right, you wrote a disc somewhere. There is a, a, a brief moment of like eye well, contact. Right. And you don't okay. even, you know that I am a basisoid, so you don't even say the words of encouragement. Oh, uh, nice. I, I just look you, yeah, in the eyes. Got it, boss. Uh, all right. Connected in. Intense. I sit down, <laughs> waiting. Yeah. For this hacking check. <laughs> Lovely. Let's now, not disappoint anybody. So the difficulty for this hacking check is five. Oh. We got this, we got this. We got this. We got this. And I'm going to spend two threat. No. Ah. Making it six. Okay. Oh. You've I didn't even think the game success. allows you to go to six, but I'm making it six. <laughs> hey, we're gonna get the drummer in in the first step. Okay. And you have two successes so to begin. We have two successes to begin. So we need I, four. I get my two D twenty up top. Definitely uh, one die for a disc is cheap. So. Yes, yeah. I will spend one for an additional die. Uh, I don't think I need to make any additional. Okay, what's the att- attribute in department? I assume a control science. Control science. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that is beating a fifteen. Am Just I able? Wait, am I able to assist as well? You are. Do we One also die. have the ship, or is it only me? Or the... it's just the two of you. The mm. ship doesn't assist me. So we need how many successes? Six. And we have two. We have two, and you're rolling three. So we need, we need to, to pass off all of, all of them. Yeah. Or you could give me some threat in order to get a momentum. Oh, mm. so two threat for one momentum. Yeah, yeah. that is such a bad deal. <laughs> um, no, no, it's two threat for a die. What are you trying to roll on? Two threat for a die. So you uh, get 15. another die. Two threat for a die. Oh, well, yeah. Same. Oh, okay. Two threat for a die. I think we'll get one more. Okay. Yeah. No. Absolutely. The captain spent her determination. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we were there. We were there. Yeah, we were there. So, so okay. All right. Okay. You okay. Gain so, two threat. You, so thank you, and you get an extra. Die. I gain an extra, so now rolling four d twenty. Right. And I'm doing. Is it control? Control yes. science. Oh. What? <laughs> I have faith of the. Can I stack things in this? It depends. What does okay. it say? Okay, faith of the heart. When I use one of my values, um, relying on the team around me, we're strong together to spend determination. Yes. Mm-hmm. I can also add one momentum to the group pool. I will give you that extra momentum. Quite happy with that. Does Do you that, want to spend those two momentum to roll additional down your side? That won't get you one because you need to spend uh, three now. Right. But even though we, because so two threats is doing that instead of mm-hmm. wait. Oh. But you had momentum. I spent one to gain one. One momentum, okay. thanks. Okay. Yeah, Liquid would cost two, which is the threat. Technically, we could buy the first threat for one momentum, the second dice for two momentum, and give three threats to get the third. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 give three. Okay, okay. Give three. Well, it's only one more. Okay, great, great, great. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll stick with these sets of four. Just and they crit. do get to re-roll you one. Do, do you, okay. I do get to re-roll if, one. If you can hit your focus as well. That would mm. be uh, right, I do so. have a focus in cybernetics. So. Not cybernetics, I think this would be hacking or... Yeah, I do not have hacking good. specifically. Okay, we'll just roll good. I oh, failed. No help there. Oh my god, this is such a bad roll. Um, a complication. Oh. So <laughs> I got three hits and one complication. Three oh. hits and one complication, that leaves you shy of one... No oh, thing. I get to re-roll though. I ah. haven't re-rolled, so we're gonna... Can you re-roll the complication? We're gonna re-roll that complication, get out of here. For a three. Yes. Okay. okay. That- Gives you four. four. We bought two. And you get two from the natural one. So yes, that's six. six. Oh, okay. Hey. All right. Scraping it together. Scraping mm. it together. <laughs> <laughs> you have. Uh, you have come across coding like this before. Mm. It is very, very complex mm-hmm. stuff. This is something that possibly would be at the level of the Obsidian Order, Hmm. which is the secret service of the Cardassian Union, Mm -hmm. or perhaps the Tel Shiar, which are the Romulan secret service. Hmm. But this is military-grade encryption stuff. Mm -hmm. But we are near the Cardassian border. You are near the demilitarized zone and the Cardassian border, that is correct. The big challenge is that you cannot change the direction this thing is going. The engines are basically at thrust. All you can do is stop them. It's going to keep drifting. Momentum will keep it drifting, but But instead of it being in five minutes now, it's going to be in about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You are still in the danger zone. We have a little more time. Getting a hacking visual. Can we beam the cargo off? You don't know what a cargo is. We, that we have a right. cargo transport. The lead lining means mm. that you would have to try and beam the entire block out tons. at the same time. Do mm. we have the room for that on the Nova? The Nova doesn't have the industrial <clears throat> transporters. Could there. we 
No, the radiation would would cook us. Okay, all. so it has stopped. It's just it's drifting. Well, the the, the, the engine has stopped. Is, yeah. Mm. We don't actually. Oh, sugar. All right. Well, but now we still need get to the take the shot. We can get the or... tractor beam on it. Do we yes. need to, the engine stop? We got to get right? it. So we can. I guess we because it's no longer moving under its own power. I guess you'd be taking yes. a tractor beam let's shot move, rather than the gun. Well, let's move mm. in and get the tractor beam. Oh, if it, it stops now, we can yes. check it. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. So okay. I guess within the I'm hacking saying. the hacking <laughs> space of it. Yeah. Because hey, you know, I love the movie hackers. All the visuals that kind yeah. of go in, and we're kind of co co collaborating. So it's back yeah. and forth on this. I think uh, within the this digital space. Uh, almost like marionette strings come from Votin's like fingers that then latch on to these data streams and uh, they are trying to kind of like pull those instructions back almost kind of like under reins to pull back and it's straining we're on the limit of it something okay, that that's they great. can't do on their own i think um while i'm looking at the code you we're communicating telepathically mm. we're very we're, i think you see a complete okay. completely different side of you say you're up with us no i said lovely I think, right? <laughs> I think you see a completely <laughs> different side of dale because we're we're doing an enormously complicated technical task mm. i think i almost get overexcited and i start mm -hmm. you know sort of doing this like Oh, Votan, this is brilliant. Like, oh, what are you doing? This is, I've never seen coding like this. How did you, where did you learn this? How did you, you're, you're doing all this while be, I don't understand. Like, it's a, it's a mm. very hyper-focused excitement. <laughs> noise. Yeah. But to you, yeah. it's, it's almost distracting. Yeah, it's because I guess this is my thoughts connected to. So on your monitor, you can also see, like, Votan's thoughts all, yeah, in real yeah, time. Yeah. It's oh a, 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 an informational mess. Yeah. But yeah, uh, with the your kind of coding at your side, we kind of like a, you know a little digital construct yeah, of exactly. you also appears I, I inside. Quite, and I quite literally did not know you had this in you, and now I want to be your best friend. Oh, no. <laughs> I kept it secret on purpose um, <laughs> right. for the nature of the character. But yes, Commander Captain. Taon, uh, yes, I need sir? you to get the tractor beam on that vehicle stat and get it brought out of here. We are going to need to move in closer in order to do that. Correct. That is correct. Correct. What range? <laughs> All right. All right. We need to get so in. And you're out going to take quickly. the ship into close range. Okay. But Good. here's the thing: hallucinations might happen. So I need everyone to have your wits about you. Try to stay grounded. Find whatever it is inside you that keeps you who you are. Looking at you. And <laughs> if we can, on those uh, coordinates, can we just program them again in out? I get already that have programmed right. them. Captain. Of course you have, because you're the best. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, let's, <laughs> let's get it done. Yeah, I'll get onto the tractor tractor beam. All see, right. Once again. Just change. before you engage the tractor beam, you are in your cyberspace, mm -hmm. and you are aware yeah. that someone is now following the trail back to you. Mm. And we'll be back. In the next episode. No! Oh. To be continued. <laughs> That's not fabulous. Flip <laughs> 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 the table. Oh, good. Oh, what? All right. Thank you so much for watching episode one of Dark Rifts. I hope that you enjoyed it, or at least that you started to get a sense of it. Bear in mind, none of us had really played second edition. And they sent me the beautiful, beautiful second edition book. This is from Modiphius. None of us had actually played this to any serious length by the time of this recording. So we'd had the rule book, but you know what it's like reading the rule book and then remembering all those rules and putting them into practice, two very different things. So watch my episodes on how to play Star Trek, where I actually go through the rules as best as I possibly can and present them to you. If you are looking at what I've done and you go, I don't think that's the actual rule. It probably isn't. It's probably just bad memory on my behalf. Anyway, if you like these little pre and post ambles, let me know in the comments down below. You can find all of my amazing players in the links down below as well. Go check out their stuff. They're doing some cool, amazing, wonderful things. And until next week, Wednesday, I wish you and yours long life and prosperity. Oh, and happy gaming.